Okay, so let's get started. So like I said earlier today, unfortunately is our last virtual class, but since it is our last class, today is all about having fun. So you all will code a game um, in Calypso today. The game will have points and you can win or you can lose. And then at the end of class today, we'll also watch a really fun video related to AI. So to make the game um, for the agenda for today, we'll talk about two new functions you guys haven't explored yet in Calypso. And these are games and scores. And you'll be able to use these in your game. Um, and then we'll give you all time to make your own game and you're free to be as creative as you want. And then lastly, since it is our last class and I thought um, I will show you guys a fun video. Um, this will be a surprise at the end. So let's get started. Why don't everyone go to Calypso, calypsorobotics.com. I'll send the link in the chat. Um, just so we have an idea of if we have any new, pe new people here, is anyone here who haven't used Calypso? So I can um, give an explanation also. Okay, so there are a few people who haven't used it. Okay, and Stacy raised their hand. Oh, okay, um, so Calypso, we've been using it for our virtual classes for the past few weeks. It is a AI programming framework made for students to learn about programming and computational thinking. Um, it is made for a robot called Cosmo, but since we're doing everything virtually right now, we're not running our programs on a real robot. Instead, we're running it in simulation mode, which is just as cool and actually is how a lot of robotics research firms and companies um, build their robots, they will need to test it first in simulation mode before they would um, deploy it onto the robot. Okay, so, um, oh, I said I will send the link. It is calypsorobotics.com. Okay, is everyone here? Perfect. So for people who are new, it is a visual programming framework, so you would not have any problem picking it up today. And I'll also walk you through it. Okay, so in order to make the game, um, let's talk about something we call timer. Um, so this is how we keep track of time in Calypso. And you'll also see the game will make later, um, will make use of time. Um, so on the, uh, over on the win side, let's add a tile um, and we see there's a tile called timer. And once you select it, it gives me different options of how many seconds I want to use. So just for demonstration purposes, let's do this one for two seconds. So now I have one timer, two seconds. And now over on the do side, um, I'm clicking on the plus right here. And let's just do say, and um, I'll just type in hi. This is just to show everyone the timer functions and we'll explore. So now we have a program that says one timer, two seconds, do say hi. So now we should keep in mind that timer, it actually means every two seconds or however long you've chosen. It's not just the first two seconds since you start the program. It actually means every two seconds. So let's run the program to see what I mean.
So if you look onto my screen, you'll see Cosmo says hi over and over again. Actually, um, to be able to see more clearly, I'll actually add a once tile. So it's actually not saying it over and over again, but instead it should be saying it every two seconds. Okay. Um, hi, Dave. Dave is in the room. Um, Dave says the ones tile doesn't work here. Okay. Um, right. Um, so while well, the key point to get here is the timer means every two seconds instead of just doing it once for the first two seconds. Okay, um, I'll give everyone a few minutes or so to try timer on your own laptop. Okay, I'll just read out loud what Dave is saying in the chat. Um, the once doesn't work here because once gets reset whenever the win side is no longer true. Okay. Um, and when timer is only true for an instinct. Okay. Um, okay, I think we can Try a different example. Okay, so um, I changed the example from say to glow random color. So now you'll say, uh, now you see here on my screen that the robot is changing um, to a random color every two seconds. I'll give everyone some time to try the timer on your own. All right, are we ready to move on? If you have a question, you can send us a message. Okay, great. So now we've seen a little bit of how timer works. Um, the next thing I want to introduce to you all is scores and we'll also use that later when we make a game. So what I did just now was I started a new Calypso program. So score is over on the do side. And what we can do with it, with it is to um, use it to keep track of numbers, or um, you can also think of it as a variable if you've done other programming before. Um, so just so um, I can show you how it works, we can... Um, combine timer what we just did before. Um, let's say 
one timer one second. So we know from playing around with timer earlier that this will mean every time a second passes. So now we can come over um, to the do side and let's go to game. So game is where everything has to do with score lives. Um, so here we can see here is plus score. So this will add points to your score or minus or set score. And also the other two game functions we'll actually use later is when and end. So end is ending a game or when is your, uh, you will be winning a game. Um, so let's focus on score first. So let's say um, I want to give myself a point every time a second passes. And when I picked sco uh, plus score, it showed me different options of different colors of scores. And this is, um, you can pick anything here. So I'm gonna pick blue. And now um, it showed me a few options to pick points. So I can choose when every second passes, I want to add one point or two points or three points to my blue score. So here I'll do one point. Now, if you look onto my screen, let's see what happens when we run this program. So does everyone see this blue number here on the upper right corner? So this is where um, Calypso shows us scores. And the score is blue because I picked the blue score. And it would be red if you pick the red score or orange if you pick the orange score. And it's increasing every second. Um, because what we coded Calypso to do is every time a second passes, plus one point to the blue score. Oh, okay, I'll come out of this. Um, it, it will just keep increasing. Great. So now I would like everyone to try this combination of time, timer, and scores so you can have. Um, every time two second passes and then um, have it manipulate your score either by increasing points or decreasing points. And um, pay attention to when you run the program, it will show you how it's increasing or decreasing over um, on the upper right corner. So I'll give everyone um, two or three minutes or so. If you have any questions, feel free to send me or our TA in the room a message.
How's everyone doing? Raise your hand if you've uh, been able to get the timer and scores to work. Great, awesome. Okay, so I think most people are ready to move on. So um, for our programming challenge for today, um, I previously talked about, we'll be able to make a game using the timer and scores function. Um, so what we'll do now is I will share my screen and show you what the game looks like. And um, from, this, um, from looking at my demo, um, you'll be able to figure out how the game works and how the scores increase or decrease. And the challenge is to replicate the game um, on your own computer and see if you can figure out. Okay, so let me share my screen to show you how this works. And I'll try to hide the um, code I have. So you'll only see the game and you won't be able to see the code. Um, give me one moment. All right. So in this game, which now you should be able to see how it works, but not see the code, um, we have a score that's decreasing with every second. Oh, actually this wouldn't work because I need to be um, in the Calypso tab. Okay, so this works by, um, your challenge is to have the virtual robot Cosmo to move to one of the cubes. So you have three cubes in the map right now. And the challenge is to move to one of them within 15 seconds. Um, you will win the game. If, you're, if you fail to move to one of the cubes within 15 seconds, then you lose. Um, and the timer is counting down 15 seconds. And you have 15 seconds to reach one of the cubes or you lose. Any questions about the challenge? Okay, so what I tried to do was try to cover up the code part, so to show you how it works. Um, but I realized I need to be, um, if I want to play the game, I need to be in the tab. Um, so let me show you um, the setup. And um, so if I click on replay, so you see the timer is counting down. So now the player would move the robot to reach one of the cubes and that um, then you win the game. If you fail to reach one of the cubes within 15 seconds, 
then you will lose the game. There's one other thing um, you will need to know to be able to finish the challenge. Um, so to be able to use your keyboard to control the robot, we need to have the win gamepad do move rule, which is here. Um, everyone being uh, can see this okay? Um, so what this says is when you press any controls on your gamepad, so now being your keyboard and um, your virtual robot Cosmo will move accordingly. So the gamepad controls are your up arrow, down arrow, left and right on your keyboard. So if I just run this program with the one gamepad to move rule, um, if I press my up arrow, it will move forward. And then if I press down arrow, it will move back and then left and right. Um, so you will need this rule to be able to move your robot for the game. Um, so make sure you include it. All right, I will give everyone um, a bit of time so you can work on the challenge. Um, so pay attention to um, how you use the timer and in combination with the scores. If you have any questions, please send me or our TA a message. Oh, okay. So um, just got a message from Stacy. Um, so to do 15 seconds, you need to do 10 seconds and then five seconds. Um, so it only has five seconds or 10 seconds, but you can make 15 seconds by um, doing 10 and then five. Good question. Okay, so I see a lot of people are making progress. Good job.
So to run the program, we had a question. Uh, it's the delete key on a Mac or backspace on a Windows computer. Okay. I know a few people have already figured it out. Great job. Um, we can have a volunteer to share your screen and you can share the, uh, share with the class how you work through the problem and show us your game. Uh, anyone would like to volunteer? Can send me a message or raise your hand. I know Tahir, you said you finished it. How's everyone doing? Raise your hand if you're done with the challenge. Okay, I know, Dia, you're done. Great. If no one wants to share, then we can walk through the program together. How about that? Okay, so I see one raised hand. Okay, um, Charlie's still working on his timer. That's all right. Okay, I see Mahak Khan raised their hand. Would you like to share your program with the class?
Okay, I think most people either are done or um, you're stuck using the timer or the scores. Um, so I will share my screen so we can walk through it together. How does that sound? Okay, so now you're able to see my screen. So I have the when gamepad do move line, uh, which we coded earlier. And this allows us to use our keyboard to move our robot. Um, so, okay, so what we saw in the game was that um, the game starts off with a score being set to 15, right? So that's our starting condition for the game. Um, so we can set the starting condition by um, going over to the do side. And remember, um, there was a set score here. Um, so this allows us to start the game with a score already. Um, so let's pick red here. And then um, we said 15 points, which is just 10 points and then five points. Okay, so um, this part is a bit tricky uh, because we want to add a once tile here um, because we want the score to be only set once. And then for the rest of the game, it'll actually change. Um, it, the score will decrease. Great, so now let's try to run this program. Okay, so what we see here is on um, the upper right corner, we see a red 15, our red scores being set to 15 points. And here we have a check mark over here it means it was done. Um, so we have a 15 points to start with. Okay, now I have a question for you all. Um, what is the mechanism in the game? How does the game, um, how do you win or lose? Okay, so um, in the chat, someone mentioned that um, in the game, it's counting down the time. So now we can try and program this portion of it. Um, when we all explored the timer and score functions, we saw that we can use a time, use the timer to increase or decrease the score with a set amount of seconds. Um, so here, we can do what we did in our earlier exercise. Um, but instead of increasing our score here, we want to decrease our score, right? Um, because the timer 15 seconds is counting down. Um, so now we have one timer, one second. So every time a second passes, what do we want to do here? That's right, yeah. So every time a second passes, we'll decrease the score. So I picked minus and then red score and then one point. Okay. All right, so now let's try and run our program as is now. So we can move the robot around using our keyboard and timer is counting down. Um, so what are we miss missing here in this program? So we see on my screen here is actually going to minus. So we, that's not what we want to happen. The game will end um, once we get to zero. So once once time runs out. So we can do that by setting a condition where the player loses. Um, so as we talked about before, to lose the game, um, we will use this end tile right here. Um, so now on this new line here, I have do end. 
So what is the condition where the game will end? Great. Okay, so um, someone mentioned that um, the game ends when you run out of time. So we're keeping time with the score, the red score here. So what we can do is um, when the score runs out, when score gets to zero, the, t um, the game ends. So now over on the win side, we can do win scored, red score equals, oh, zero points. So when our score gets to zero, meaning that when time runs out, the game ends. Okay, so now we have how the game ends, um, but how do we win? Can, if you know the answer, can you send it in the chat? That's right, so we win by getting to the cube. Awesome, thanks Tahir. So um, remember from our previous classes, um, when get to a cube is when bumped cube, and then now we can put game and win. Awesome, great job everyone. So now we have this program, let's see if it works. And if I can get to a cube, it's kind of hard. Okay, so I just lost the game. I didn't get to a cube within 15 seconds. Um, so you, now you know how this works. You can actually um, change the time. You can have 20 seconds, you can have 10 seconds. You can move the cubes around. Um, remember if you were here in our last few classes, you can actually edit the world map um, and place cubes in a different location than um, it, what it looks like right now. Um, so now you have um, coded a game. Um, I would encourage you to share it with your parents or your siblings at home, see if they can get to the cube. And uh, you can even set a record for your house to see who can get to a cube the fastest. And like you, like you saw with mine, it's pretty hard um, to get to a cube just within 15 seconds but maybe I picked a hard one. Okay, very good job on the challenge. Any questions? Okay, so um, if we don't have any questions, we'll move on to our last bit of our class today, which is also um, our last 10 minutes or so of virtual class. So I wanted to share with you all a pretty fun video that I saw that has to do with AI. Um, you can still see my screen, right? Um, so raise your hand if you know who Jay-Z is. Okay, people who don't know who Jay-Z is, okay. We see some hands. I see Tahir raised his hand. Great. So um, I guess Jay-Z was pretty big in the 90s when um, I was a kid. Okay, so this video, um, as you can see here, is Jay-Z rapping Shakespeare. So let's, oh, let's watch it. Um, let me know if you can hear my computer audio. Oh. For the slings and their rules of a tree, just Can you hear it? for the tick arms against the sea and troubles in by our pulls in and them to die to sleep no more and by sleep to say we in the herd of kin the dust and natural shops the flesh is here too. Tis the consummation, devilly to be wished. 
to die to sleep, sleep purchase the dream. It ain't as the rub put in that sleep of death. What dreams may come when we had shuffle off this mortal code must give us pose. There's the respect that makes calamity in so long life for who would be the wits and scorns of time. The upper such wrong, the problem is continually. The pains of disparate slow, the lows delay. The insolence of office and the spurns the patient will rid of them what it takes. When he himself might, his quitters make with a bare body. And who would fathers be if to grind the sweat under a weary life? But that the dread is something after death. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the well and makes us rather bear those of we had to fly to others that we know not of. This conscious, those make cowards of us all. And this a native who of resolution is sickly or the poor cast of thought. And in the presence of great pitching moment with this regard, they currents turn to riot and lose the name of action. Wow, so that. What do we think of that? Any thoughts on the video? I thought that was pretty cool. I see, I see a few thumbs ups, a few claps from people. Um, did we think that was realistic? So, um, to, just so uh, just so we know, these videos there are entirely generated by very sophisticated artificial intelligence. So Jay Z did not make this video, but um, an algorithm did. Um, but did we think it actually sounded pretty real, as if Jay Z rapped Hamlet? What do we think? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was super realistic too. So um, I, let me come out of this, go, and go back to our presentation. Okay, right. Um, so this is what people call deep fake. Raise your hand if you've heard of deep fake. Okay, we haven't heard of deep fake. So deep fake is a combined word by combining deep learning and fake. So deep learning is a type of machine learning. Uh, remember in the second class when we use teachable machine to train a machine learning model. Um, so deep learning is a type of machine learning. Um, and deep learning is actually in the news a lot lately um, because people can use it to make super realistic audios like we just saw. Um, that are completely fake, but they're generated by using AI. Um, and deep fakes are not just audio. Um, you can actually search online and find many different videos or photos um, of people talking and posing, but they were actually they were actually never real photos. So how do we think these fake deep fake audios like, Jay-Z rapping Hamlet was made. Um, deep fakes are actually made by feeding audios of a person speaking. So um, Jay-Z is a very famous celebrity and we have a lot of audio of him talking and rapping and we can feed it to machine learning models to replicate his speech patterns. So how he talks. Um, so if you can see here, here we have Jay-Z's entire discography. Um, so we have a lot of data on how Jay-Z says a word or how Jay-Z raps. Um, as you all know, everyone has their different style of speaking. Um, it's not only how you say different words, but um, how you raise your voice up and down. Um, it's actually very individualistic of um, how a person talks. So now we have a lot of data on how Jay-Z talks. Um, we can feed all of that audio to a machine learning model. Um, here we have a little animation of, of a neural network. And once the neural network has trained on um, audio of Jay-Z talking, we can have this text of Hamlet um, and apply that uh, with everything we know about Jay-Z. So uh, now we have this video of Jay-Z not only speaking Hamlet, but it sounds entirely like him. Not just the sound of his voice, but also the rhythm of how he raps and the cadence and um, his prosody. Um, so 
this was the ending fun AI video that I wanted to share with you all. Here, it's a pretty interesting application of AI, but we should also keep in mind that um, because now we can make super realistic videos and audios of people speaking, what if Jay-Z doesn't feel comfortable with this video being out there or this audio that he actually never made? Um, what if someone made a video of you speaking, uh, talking that you um, actually never said? Um, so these are a few things that we should also keep in mind as maybe you run into more videos and audios of deep fakes on the internet. But I thought that was a pretty fun AI application video to end our lesson here today. Um, if you have any questions, I know our session run a few, um, 20 minutes over than usual. So if you have any questions, we'll stay around for maybe just five minutes or so. Um, and um, if we're not able to answer your question, you can always email us at info at readyai.org and we'll make sure to get back to you then. Like I mentioned earlier before we started the class, we're actually offering summer camps that start the first day of June. And these are camps we'll um, dive in deeper into Calypso and you all will create pretty complicated AI projects in Calypso. Uh, the camps are two weeks long, um, but they run uh, starting the first of June and um, throughout the summer. So there are a few different time slots that you can sign up if, um, you want to be keep learning AI with us this summer. All right, wonderful job. And I'm so happy to see everyone here in our last class. We'll stick around for a few minutes. Um, and if not, please keep in touch. Um, I'll send our, um, my email here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's been really wonderful to see everyone here week after week. Okay, Dia, you have a question? Okay, um, I can unmute you. All right, you can talk now. Um, do we have to pay for the camp? Yeah, so um, you need to pay for the camp um, because it's a bit longer and we have an instructor that's dedicated to teaching the camp. Um, it's also just six people in the class. So it would be um, not, to so many people uh, in the virtual class like this, and you will be able to work with the instructor. I can um, send the link to sign up for the summer camp in the chat. Um, but um, if you have any issues regarding finances, you can send me an email and I will be able to um, work it out with you. Okay. Thanks, Dia. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Um, Yeah, so um, this is the last day of our virtual class. Um, we just got a question. So next week, next Thursday, we won't have uh, more classes, unfortunately. Um, I will send the link to the summer camp now. Um, oh, I'm still sharing, okay. Okay, so um, the link to sign up for the summer camp, I just left in the chat. And I'll also send out in our follow up email with the recording later today.
Okay, we, I don't think we were getting more questions. Um, so thanks everyone for joining today and we'll end the class here for now. Um, it's been great to teach this virtual class and I hope um, you've been having fun attending every Thursday and learning a little bit of AI and programming. Um, hopefully we don't, if we don't see you in summer camp, we'll see you some other time and I also like to point out that since um, this summer is going to be quite strange, we won't be able to have a lot of regular activities in person like we used to. There are um, free courses on our website about AI that you can take and um, hopefully that will keep you learning throughout the summer. All right, everyone, you've been awesome. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Bye.